Hey everyone, welcome back to Brian's Mysteries and Adventures on Trail. I hope everyone's weekend is off to a great start. Before we get started today, I just wanted to say, for those of you that did watch the last video, sorry, I uploaded it the first time and for some reason the sound just didn't come on, so I had to pr make it private real quick and then upload it again, so I apologize for those that saw it that first time with no sound, but it was fixed and I appreciate everyone coming back to watch it again. So today we are going to be going to the state of Pennsylvania. This case takes us to Michaud State Forest, which is in the pretty much right in the middle of the state, but in the southern part. So I'm going to have various maps up as always. People love to go to this area to go camping and hiking. There's also different areas that you're allowed to hunt in. That's what today's case is going to be about. This case actually takes us back to the year of 2009. A young man by the name of Chad Stroop, who's only 26 years old during this occurrence, he was going out to scout for hunting trails to do his annual hunting trip that he did with his father every year. Now, Chad had been taught very, very strict hunting safety rules since he was a young child. He was a very experienced outdoorsman. He was very knowledgeable. This, unfortunately, is the only picture that I could find of Chad. It was in one of the newspaper archives that I'm going to discuss with you, but really online, there's only a few small articles about this story. He was living in Columbia, which is in Lancaster County. It was about an hour and 20 minutes, hour and a half drive to this location, which just FYI, he had been to many times. He was familiar with this location. I believe according to reports and testimony by his family, this would have been his fifth or sixth time to this location. Like I said, he was just going there not to hunt, but just scout different and new trails that he and his father could come back to after Thanksgiving to hunt various small game. We do know that his truck was found where Shippensburg Road meets Birch Run Road. I'll get into that more in a little bit. He left his house at 9 a.m. that morning. He was supposed to be back sometime that afternoon or early evening. However, by 9 p.m. that evening, he had not returned. His family became very concerned. They contacted the Pennsylvania State Police at Carlisle. They reported him missing. The Carlisle Police Department jumped right into action. However, his friends and family were already in Michaud State Forest searching for Chad. The Carlisle Police Department had contacted the Cumberland County Division of Public Safety. At that point, they had asked all the people, his friends and family, to vacate the area because they were going to bring in their search and rescue team that had various helicopters equipped with infrared technology, and they didn't want that to possibly create confusion. However, after they brought this chopper in, the Cumberland County Search and Rescue had no luck with finding Chad. They brought in more people from roughly 25 different agencies. So at the height of the investigation, they had over 100 people on the ground. Now, when they found his truck, it was located in an area like we've discussed on Shippensburg Road where it beats Birch Run Road. However, there was no signs of foul play. The car wasn't broken into. There was no signs of a struggle. It looked as if it always did. Once they had found the truck and confirmed that it did belong to Chad, they fanned out from that area covering many of the dirt roads and roads that led into the park. This is a pretty extensive park and there's many different entrances. However, they figured that since he wasn't there to hunt, he was just scouting, he probably was within at least a five mile radius. So that's where they focused their search. Unlike many search and rescue efforts that we've discussed on this channel, this case did not take long for them to get answers. They actually found Chad within 48 hours of starting their search. He was found roughly a half a mile from where his truck was found. He was lying partially in a creek that was roughly an inch deep to a foot deep depending on where you were in the creek. Now the information was kind of scattered however it seems that he was found in a very shallow part of the creek. There was no signs of trauma. There was no injury to any part of his body. There was no signs of a struggle. No signs that animals had been there. This is important when we get down to discussing what could have possibly happened to this young man. Chad originally went missing on November 17th 2009. Two firefighters around 3 p.m. on November 19th of 2009 were the ones that discovered his remains in this creek. They of course brought in all the different search and rescue people. 
There was one of the sheriff's department uh, spokespeople that gave a press conference announcing that they had found him. Like I said, everybody that came to that location, they all said the same thing. They were confused because there was no sign of injury. There was no drag marks. There was no sign of a scuffle or foul play. They did find Chad's backpack and gear. He was well supplied. He had plenty of food, water, camping supplies. Even though he hadn't planned to camp overnight, he could have stayed there during a winter blizzard. He had a winter tent, plenty of clothes. He was very, very well dressed for the weather. He had his compass, which apparently he always carried with him. He knew how to make a fire even in inclement weather. He had plenty of matches and a lighter. He also carried a two-way radio, which had a range of roughly two miles. It's unclear, but it wasn't a SATCOM device. It was a two-way radio that he usually used with his father. The point is that he was very, very well prepared for this small expedition that he had just gone out to search for various new hunting trails. It was very clear to the authorities that this young man had most likely not died of hypothermia or exposure. After he was found, his remains were taken to the Lehigh Valley Hospital where they were going to, to conduct the initial autopsy, which they did. Now those autopsy reports came back and the autopsy reports claimed that they were inconclusive, or at least that's what the report said. They couldn't determine what had happened to this young man. It's reported that the medical examiner's office said that they needed to do a more extended autopsy, possibly send it to another lab, which ultimately they did. However, there was a big gap of time between when those autopsy reports came back. And they claimed that Chad had died from an arrhythmia, a heart arrhythmia, most likely which caused him to have a seizure which most likely caused him to fall and then subsequently drowned in this one or two inches of water that he was found in. Now, I talked to a lot of different people, researched this, so if I'm wrong, please let me know because obviously I'm not a doctor, but apparently it would be very, very difficult to spot an arrhythmia when a person is already deceased. Those standard tests are something like an ECG. It's very difficult if the heart isn't beating to spot that kind of error. Moreover, if a person has a seizure, they usually fall. He was found in a creek with tons of rocks sticking out. Everybody that was on that scene said that he had not one cut or scrape on him. Seizures can be a very violent thing that happens to the body, usually shaking around. How is it that he had not a mark on him if he suffered a seizure after somehow this arrhythmia that he had never been diagnosed with? His family said that he had no health problems going into this hike. He was a healthy young man. He was only 26 years old. So how all of a sudden did this arrhythmia go undetected and all of a sudden it came out on this one hike, which then also caused him to have a seizure? To me, after talking to a couple of experts, it was very bizarre that that's what medical examiner's office came up with. I'm not saying they're wrong. I mean, I'm like I said, I don't have the information. This is just what I read and found out. So I would definitely like to hear what you guys think because to me, it just seemed really off. Please definitely let me know your thoughts in the comments and what you think might have happened to this young man. I definitely want to dedicate this video to Chad Stroop, his family and friends. My thoughts and prayers go out to all of you, everybody that knew him and loved him. Of course, all the search and rescue and authorities that helped to bring Chad home. This young man was definitely taken way too early, and in my humble opinion, under very mysterious circumstances. But again, please let me know your thoughts. Now in each video I want to, as everyone is probably preparing or getting ready for possibly the spring and summer hiking season, I want to give a few tips or one tip in each video. The biggest one is I believe you should definitely, especially if you're doing a solo hike, carry a SATCOM device. My personal one that I love and I've carried every season is the Garmin InReach, the full model. I definitely think you should get the cover and screen protector because at some point you probably will drop it. It's a great device. It's got all different features. Of course, it's got the SOS. It's got a built-in compass. You can do messaging. It's got all different types of plans. It's just a great thing to have, especially, like I said, if you're doing a solo hike. I want to thank you all for watching, as always. Special thank you to co.ag for providing the background music. I will see you all in the next one. Take care. 
Hey everyone, thanks for sticking with me to the end. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976, allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, education, and more. No copyright infringement is intended. The clips used in this video are brief and edited, usually with me narrating over, showing only amounts needed to make my point. I do not own or claim to own the rights to the footage. This video is considered fair use by YouTube and federal copyright law. Alright everyone, this is your last chance to enter the next coin giveaway, which is the Yosemite 5 ounce 3 inch Centennial coin. It's a beautiful coin. All you need to do is leave me a comment saying a case suggestion, a case that you enjoyed hearing or found interesting, any feedback you have on any of the cases, or any other comment you'd like to leave. Again, this coin will come in a US Mint box with a COA and a nice card. So please let me know if you'd like to be entered into the drawing. Also, just a heads up, if you'd like to do further reading on this case, there was very limited information on Google searches and things like that. Of course, I will have all the sources that I pulled from the archives if you'd like to look into those. Also, be mindful that there was another Chad Stroop that went missing in Texas, so don't get the two confused. I just wanted to point that out because, like I said, unfortunately, there was only a few articles on Google. But again, if any of you are interested in looking in newspaper archives, there's a lot of different great sources out there that I suggest you look into getting a subscription to. They're great.